Shalom to my brothers and sisters of YouTube. All praises to the Most High God. Uh, yesterday, I'm sorry again with my phone. I'm having some phone issues. I got cut off once again at 31 minutes of recording the last session, which is segment three, Can an Edomite Be Saved? So uh, I'm going to pick back up on where I left off so you won't be missing anything. I was in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 13 and as you all know my stance I do not believe what the Hebrew Israelite camps are teaching that no Edomite or Gentile person can be saved from what I'm hearing Paul preached to nothing but Israelites and Israel is the only one that can be saved no Gentiles can be saved or anything else like that or the Edomites is just nothing but Israel from my understanding uh, if I have something wrong, you can say something in the comments to clear that up. But that's what I'm being told and that's what I'm understanding. Also, can you like, subscribe, and share the video and pass it on as we educate and we all learn together God's word. But I will uh, finish up my stance on what I believe God was going to bring the Gentiles in and also that the Edomite can be saved according to certain prerequisites so you can follow me in the book of joel chapter 2 verse 13 the word of the lord reads as thus and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the lord your god for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil so yes i do know how god can say a lot of things and he can speak condemnation and judgment on a nation but you have to understand something about God and as you all study the scriptures for yourself and stop believing the camps and what other people say get in God's word like I do for hours and hours upon end and do an exhaustive topical study on subjects and titles and then you will find out the truth for the truth shall make you free and you won't be brought into all of this false doctrinal teaching but God is a God of a compassionate heart the scripture says if you will rend your heart if you will tear your heart and don't rent, rip or tear your garments and if you turn unto the Lord your God if you turn to Yahuwah for he is gracious and merciful and he is slow to anger and of great kindness and he repenteth him of the evil that he was about to bring the destruction and the judgment your way so as I have showed recently before and Jeremiah when Jeremiah spoke to the nation that repents I spoke to you about Isaiah strangers joining into Israel uh, and I've also spoke to you about jo uh, Jonah Jonah went to Nineveh which was a condemned nation by God and Jonah preached to them and they repented and they turned of their sins and Jonah became upset and mad because he wanted that nation to perish which sounds like a bunch of you hypocritical Hebrew Israelites you don't want to show mercy but we're going to get into the meat of God's word and see what God says about this you have to have a heart of love in the heart of God to understand this matter and this situation yes does does the Edomites call for judgment for what they have done yes it does and God sees fit to bring that judgment so let's look here in the scripture let's go to Psalms 51 and 17 that's Psalms 51 and 17 when we get to Psalms 51 and 17 we will see that this is a a psalm of David when the prophet Nathan came to him when after he had committed adultery with Bathsheba Psalm 51 and verse 17 this is what the Lord says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart O God thou will not despise let's read that again the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart O God thou will not despise I'm running into so many Edomites on here that are talking about God 
they want our God. They believe in our God. They have seen the wondrous works of Yahuwah. So you mean to tell me, and I had to really get into the word of God and study and feel God's heart and his compassion on this. If they were to come to God with a, uh, a, a broken spirit, broken, a broken spirit, a heart of contrition, and a, 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 a broken and a contrite heart, their heart is broken, their heart is receptive to receive the word of Yahuwah from his Israelite servants that God speak to only the nation of Israel. So if they come crying, breaking down their hearts, and they want to, and yes, I know you all want to say, well, Esau, Esau cried, Esau wept to his father for a blessing because the blessing was gone and he had no place, he sought no uh, uh, redemption from his father there was no blessing his father could give him because the blessing had already been give, given away so when you all say well Esau sought with tears to try to uh, get the yes he was trying to get his blessing let's keep the scripture in context he was crying and beseeching and begging his father to give him a blessing but the blessing had already been given to Jacob so he sought it with tears and he could not get anything but a prophecy from his father talking about the sword and the fatness of the land that he would live on and he would live by the sword in continual perpetual violence so if god has a person a gentile a moabite a, a edomite come to him whatever that person nationality might might be the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. God will not turn away a person who believes in Yahuwah, who believes in Yahshua and the blood of the Lamb. He will not turn that broken spirit and that broken heart away. So, so many Edomites are being relieved to see that if they believe, and if they believe in this God, Yahuwah, and believe that Israel is his nation, and they hook up and they join with us, that they can be saved from the coming wrath that is coming upon the Edomite nation. Okay, let's go here to Joshua. Uh, I got something in Joshua that the Lord showed me in my study. And you don't hear the Hebrew camp talk a lot about these scriptures. But there's, it's an eye-opening awakening in some of these scriptures that I read. I even learned some things I did not even know before. So that's the book of Joshua, chapter 6. And we're going to start reading at 17. This is about Rahab. We're going to be reading about Rahab. Now what happens here, we see that Joshua sends two spies out. He, see, he sends two spies out to go to Jericho to spy out the city that they were going to come in, take over, and destroy it. All the people of Jericho were supposed to be killed. So he sends these two spies out. So let's pick up here in Joshua chapter 6 verse 17. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot. Rahab was a prostitute. Rahab was a Gentile. She was a non-Israelite. Only Rahab the harlot, the prostitute, shall live. She and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Okay, so these two messengers came, and it wasn't uh, noticeable at all that these two men from Jericho two Israelites came to the harlot's house because they were used to men going back and forth that way into her house so there was nothing special but the king had got word of this and he sent out his men to find out where were the two spies that came in to Rahab's house the harlot's house drop down with me to verse 22 but Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. See, as she took these two spies and she hid them on the top of the roof of the house beneath flax, 
she hid them. And the king's servants came in looking for the spies. And what Rahab did was basically lie. But she lied to save these Israelite men. And God blessed her because of that. So when the, these servants come in looking for the two spies and she hid them on top of the rooftop beneath some flags, they were looking for them and she said, well, they ran out the gate. So they ended up going that way, running out the gate, and then the two Israelite spies came out. They were delivered, they were saved from being killed from the people of Jericho. So what we have here is verse 22. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman, and all that she hath, as you swear unto her. Those two spies made a promise to Rahab and told her, Because you have did this thing, and you have hid us, Rahab said, Well, what can you do for me? I put my life on the line. I could have been killed for hiding you, so what can you do for me? So what ended up happening was, those two Israelite spies made a promise that they would save her entire household. And God blessed that and he abided by that promise. So where we pick up here in verse 23. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. She came and see she sojourned and she hooked up and she joined with the Israelites. What? A Gentile? Yes, a Gentile woman. Let's finish here. Let's get understanding. The Bible says, and all thy getting get an understanding we got to get an understanding and keep it in context and they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein now they were told to kill everybody kill every man of jericho every woman of jericho every baby every boy every child of jericho the dogs the cattle burn everything of jericho to the ground and they fulfilled that and they did that except Rahab and her household her father let's go back to the scripture uh, verse 23 spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel verse 24 and they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron and they put into the treasure of the house of the Lord. They took what was called booty. They plundered and they took the gold and the silver. All right. Verse 25. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot, alive and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day. So Rahab was dwelling in Israel even at the time of this writing. Rahab was dwelling with the Israelites. So you see here a Gentile woman. Now don't you Hebrew Israelite camp people come on here talking about Rahab was an Israelite. She was a, a, a castaway Israelite from another southern or the northern nation of Israel. No, she was not. She was a Gentile woman. I'm going to show you something here about her. OK, because you when you do a study, you have to study uh, people, too. You have to study nationality. And this is where Christian ministers and the church has failed at. they haven't taught nationalities. So that's why we get everything crossed where everybody is Israel. No, everybody is not Israel. You had other different nationalities at that time. So it says. Verse 25, And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even until this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out to Jericho. Uh, that Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So we see here that Rahab, she was a prostitute. She was a non-Israelite woman. She was considered a Gentile. As a matter of fact, she was a Canaanite woman. She was a black woman from Canaan. She was a Canaan from Canaan. She, she was a Canaanite woman. All right. We even see here that she married an Israelite. What? Yes. 
she married, do your study, look at genealogies, go back and study Rahab, you will see that a Gentile woman who was a prostitute, she married a man by the name of Salmon. She married Salmon, who was an Israelite. So here you have an Israelite man and a Gentile Canaanite woman that have hooked up together. She bore a son. His name was Boaz. Boaz was the husband of Ruth. Ruth and Boaz. And then Jesus is even Joseph who is supposed to be as the father of our Lord and Savior Yahshua. He is in the family lineage and the family line. So if you look through the genealogy of Jesus Christ, you will see that a Gentile woman was named among the lineage of Jesus Christ. What? You mean to tell me a Gentile is in the lineage of Jesus Christ, the genealogy of Jesus Christ? Yes, it is. If you go with me here, let's go to the book of Hebrews. Line upon line precept upon uh, precept here a little there a little scripture will interpret itself you don't have to add anything to the bible all you've got to do is read it and study it dissect it and let the uh, ruach hakadesh give you understanding and meaning to everything you are reading so we see here and the book of hebrews somebody said i didn't know rahab a prostitute a non-israelite gentile canaanite woman she was uh considered in the hall of faith when it came down to the israelites yes she was she was accounted by faith as one and she was saved also because she dwelt and sojourned 